Rust lets you program money on Solana. Here's how you can learn how to do that. I'll start with talking about why Rust feels so difficult and I'll compare it with JavaScript. Next, in the builder loop, I'll talk about how you can go from learning to earning, to back to learning, to earning even more. Uh, in the resources section, I'll talk about all the basic resources that you have to cover the basics, go beyond, advanced, and all the way to million dollar uh, protocols. And in the products to build, I'll give you a few products that you can learn from and build from. So why does Rust feel so difficult? My opinion is that it's because it enforces a lot of rules that you're not familiar with. In contrast, JavaScript does not enforce a lot of its rules and it lets you mess up. And until you mess up and you write code that doesn't work, you write JavaScript code that bugs out at runtime when it's out there in production, you're not gonna learn those rules. To give you a few examples, uh, think about top level await uh, or the import order or even async and await. Until you make the mistakes of doing these things using these uh, tools in JavaScript the wrong way, you're not going to learn the rules of JavaScript. So JavaScript rules are learned by messing up, whereas Rust enforces all of its rules at runtime or rather at compile time. So when you're writing the Rust code, the compiler will tell you, hey, you're not allowed to do this. You're supposed to do it this way or you're supposed to do it this way. And with all of those rules comes a bit of syntax that you might not be familiar with. So that is why Rust feels so difficult. Over time, JavaScript is harder because a lot of the rules are, again, implicit. Uh, you have to go hunt documentation. You have to hunt how other people have done it to figure out how, what the right way to do it. Or you have to just go uh, trial and error. Whereas Rust, it forces you to do it right the first time. My favorite analogy for explaining this is video games. Dota, League, and StarCraft have a lot more rules than simpler games than CSGO. I would put simpler in quotes because um, it's subjective which of these games is simpler, but whatever. League and Dota, um, they're up here. They take about, let's say, a thousand hours to get average. And this is because they have a lot of unique characters which have a lot of unique abilities. League, I think, has 130 something characters. And to be at an average level at the game, you need to learn all the abilities of all the characters in the game. Every single one of these abilities has different rules into how it works, and there are rules to how these characters fight each other. Until you learn the rules of the game, and there are a lot of rules, you will not get good at it. Rust is similar. As I mentioned, it has a lot of rules. CSGO comparatively is easier than these games because if you just learn the basic rules, the one, you know, let's say the syntax, the basic syntax of how to handle a gun, you point the gun, you shoot, you win. So that is why Rust is difficult. Now, let's talk about what the process of actually learning looks, looks like. This is how I envision a Rust developer on Solana. You'll start with the basics. You'll cover the basics. I'll mention what these are in a bit. Once you've done, once you're done with the basics and you understand how Solana works, like how the ecosystem works, uh, what the basic terminologies are, yeah, you, you, got, you got two choices. You can either pick a guide or you can pick an idea that you're excited about. You do one of these things and most guides out there for Solana involve building small products. So they'll help you build a small product. From there, either the guide will tell you to build a bigger project or you can choose to build a bigger project on your own and you can go back. Uh, at this point, I don't recommend picking another guide, which is why there's no arrow over here. I recommend picking an idea that you're excited about, picking an idea that you want to build, and you build a simple version of it. Once you've built a simple version, you build a bigger version of it. You build a more advanced version or something that does a bit more. And you can stay in this loop for as long as you want, although I don't recommend staying there too long. Pick an idea, build a simple version of it, build a bigger version, a final version of it, launch it out into the video, uh, into the world, and you're good to go. Next, from here, once you've done this a couple of times, let's say three or four times, I don't necessarily think you should do this more than five times because at that point you're just spending time building projects. Uh, if you like that, cool. But most of us, uh, we wanna make money, we wanna get things out in the world. So what do you do? Go to superteam.earn, you can go to superteam earn and you can sign up for some bounties. You can find bounties, you can find contracts. There is a hackathon, there are a lot of hackathons that pay out a lot of money. There's a hackathon that started today, I think, which is the 3rd of March. Sign up to hackathons, uh, do bounties, earn contracts. Eventually, once you do a couple of these, um, maybe you're a really good developer and you've got really good uh, products you've built out, you can skip a few of these if you want and you can get a full-time job. Most of us will sit right here. If you want to sit right there, that's cool. If you don't, if you want to go even further, you can become a founder and launch your own company. So this is the actual builder loop. Uh, this is the builder loop and this is the roadmap for development on Solana. Next up, let's talk about the fundamentals themselves. I've covered these a bunch on my channel and I've, there's tons of resources out there as well. Um, the basic DAP model for Solana, what key pairs are, how key pairs work, how transactions work. I've got a great uh, transaction deep dive, uh, deep dive literally two videos ago, you can check that out. 
Doesn't matter. Don't look at my videos. Look at the docs. Look at ChatGPT. Ask ChatGPT. Once you figure out the basics, you can get your environment set up. And this is specific um, to Rust development. So you'll have to install a few libraries, uh, install the Rust CLI, install WSL. If you are on Windows, you will have to install Windows subsystem for Linux. Now, before you actually get started running, you have to choose between Anchor versus Native. Anchor is a framework for building programs on Solana. Most development these days is done on Anchor, and this is because Anchor reduces the amount of code you have to write to actually do uh, make Solana programs. It makes it easier, it saves you time, and it's just easier to learn. Uh, whereas Native is raw Rust development with the Solana libraries. Uh, it's more efficient, but when you're starting out, I highly recommend you start out with Anchor. I'm still not very good at native development. I don't really, you don't really need to start with native development and you don't even need to end with native development. It is possible for you to make million dollar or a hundred million dollar protocols with just Anchor. It's fine. Most resources out there are for with Anchor. So just be aware every now and then you learn into a resource that might say, hey, this is for Solana native. That's what the difference is, Anchor versus native. If you still don't understand what Anchor is, think of it like React or more appropriately, something like uh, jQuery. What jQuery is to JavaScript, that is what Anchor is to native Rust development. You write a small amount of jQuery and it expands into a lot of JavaScript. That's exactly what Anchor does. You write a small amount of Anchor Rust code and it, it expands into a lot of native Rust Solana code. That is Anchor versus Native. Now let's talk about what else uh, you have out there to learn with. Um, I've separated these into two types. So there's video content over here and there's written content over here. Start out with the Solana Playground. Playground, it is incredible. It is my favorite resource. And whenever someone wants to learn Solana development, this is where I send them. This is what the playground looks like. As I already talked about, you've got the frameworks, you've got Solana, uh, sorry, native, you've got Anchor and Seahorse. Seahorse is Solana development in Python. This is, it's in beta, it's not very popular, not a lot of people do it. It doesn't support a lot of things, so you can ignore this for now. Start with Anchor. Then you can choose which level you want. Uh, let's say you're not a beginner, you can choose intermediate. And these, if, when you click one of these, these, these will launch into an entire course on the platform itself. It'll guide you along with the code I don't like the word course, I like a project. So these are all projects that you can build. Next up, I highly recommend the Solana Bootcamp. This is a bootcamp from the Solana Foundation themselves. It covers most basics uh, and some, some even beyond basics. So they'll talk about arbitrage and advanced programs as well, as well as oracles, clockwork and randomness. So when you're starting out, this is probably one of the best resources for you to start out with. If you like videos, if you like having things explained to you, these are perfect. Next up, I want to talk about Buffalo Joe's YouTube channel. So Buffalo Joe, this is Joe Caulfield from Anza Labs, which was formerly known as Solana Labs. So Solana Labs is the actual team, the, the humans, the people that are actually building the Solana protocol themselves. They're writing the validator clients, they're building the network themselves. So who better to run, learn Rust from than Buffalo Joe? He's got a really cool YouTube channel. He's got all the basics covered. So all the way from the Solana CLI, Hello Solana, NFTs, most basic things he's covered. You can probably run through these in maybe two or three days. They are incredible. Joe is incredible, highly recommend these. Finally, you've got Solani's YouTube channel. Uh, he has a ton of stuff on almost everything Solana and I will specifically recommend the SolDev explanations that he does. So SolDev is the number one course for learning Solana. This is what it looks like. Uh, it is free. You don't even need to sign up. You just open this up. I will link this in the description. And he has a playlist in which he walks through each lesson. So if you want additional help, if you want additional explainers, or if you just want to be entertained, highly recommend this one as well. Now, it's important that you pick one thing and just do it. Don't think about, okay, first I'll do this and then I'll do this. No, don't get stuck in an analysis paralysis. Pick one thing, one resource, just pick one of these courses that are over here, one of these builds, one of these things, and just get started, man. The, easy, the earlier you start, the better it is. Now, with written programs and courses and guides, there's a bunch available as well. I've already talked about SolDev. You've also got Rise In, Career Boosters, uh, Beginner and Advanced uh, Solana course, as well as Free Code Camp. So Free Code Camp also has a thing. Where is Free Code Camp? This is Free Code Camp. Really cool. Uh, you do it all on your machine itself. So pick whichever one feels good, whichever one you're excited about, and just get started. I also want to give a shout out to the Web3 Builders Alliance. These, this is a cohort based program where you do, you do need to apply, but you get grouped into a bunch of other folks that are also building on Solana. You get live lectures, you get incubation, and it is incredible. It is free. I highly recommend it if you want to really amp it up and you want to go really serious. Now, this will cover all the basics. You'll be able to read programs and you'll be able to write the basics. And the important part here is the reading. Once you understand what a program looks like, what the basic syntax is, what the program is doing. 
I've done these and I can now read the programs and I can understand generally what a program is doing. The next step here is to level it up. The two resources that I would recommend here are the program examples from the Solon developers. So if you look over here, this is a repo of a bunch of programs available uh, from, from tokens to scripts, compression, oracles, whatever you want. Most things are available over here. Next up, you've also got the open source Solana edition a list of all Solana open source projects. What's happening here is every, almost every single open source Solana protocol, they are listed over here. So these are literally programs that have half of my net worth on them, more than half of my network on them. These programs are open source. So if you learn or search for, for instance, MarginFi, MarginFi is the biggest, one of the biggest ones. You can look into the programs, the actual Rust that MarginFi has. You can look at what their code says. Um, it's incredible. You can learn from these. What I recommend doing over here is once you've uh, obviously covered the basics and you learn you know how to read them, you can reverse engineer these programs and you can learn how these how they work. You can learn how margin file is doing things and you can uh, reverse engineer them and you can build simple versions of them and you can even copy paste some of the code. Please do respect their licenses. As I mentioned, listen to the open source and yeah, their licenses allow a bit of copy pasting. Just make sure you uh, follow the rules of the license. Now, You've got an incredible protocol available, whatever it is, you've got an incredible program available. What do you do next? You go to the Solana hackathons. This is where companies are launched. This is where you get thousands, tens of thousands of funding. Um, most Solana companies that are out there right now launched in a previous Solana hackathon. There's one going on right now, as I've mentioned. Sign up for the hackathons, they're free. And again, all of these resources out here are also free. So pick a resource, just one. Doesn't have to be 10, just pick one resource, whichever resource you feel most comfortable with, whichever resource feels most exciting, pick that resource, stick with it, just go. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is, you're not gonna learn how to code. You're only going to learn how to build these programs by actually coding. What does this mean? This means that you can't read the documentation and memorize the documentation and expect that that's going to help you write Solana programs. No, you're gonna learn how programs learn by actually writing the code. So you have to learn, you have to be comfortable making a few mistakes, you have to be comfortable with your code not running. Just remember that's normal. Everyone goes through this. I go through this 10 times a day where I will do things that don't work. Even though I've been doing this for over two years at this point, I still write code that doesn't work the first time, the second time, the third time. Remember that it's normal for your code not to work. You only learn by fixing and by doing it incrementally. Now let's talk about a few projects to build. I've got, these are just a few suggestions. My my recommendation is always to pick something that you're excited about. If you're not excited about any of these, you can ignore them, but for the time being, let's just start with the basics. You're gonna start with a counter. There's a really cool uh, template available in the anchor starter that has counter at three levels. So three levels of difficulty or three levels of advancement. Next step for each of these projects, what I've, I've chosen ideas that introduce you to specific things that are happening on chain. The Time Lock Vault, for instance, will help you figure out how to handle deposits. It'll help you learn how to get the time on chain. The fundraising platform will help you uh, do similar things. On chain Twitter will help you understand how data storage on Solana works, as well as comp compression. Most of these have resources available that I'll have linked in the description. There's an incredible course by Loris that covers all of the necessary things necessary to build an on chain version of. Twitter on Solana, including, including authentication, submitting posts, posts, as well as reading data from accounts on chain. Next up, NFT auctions. This will teach you how to handle NFT transfers, how to handle bids. Staking will teach you how to do stakes. Staking, all about staking on stake accounts on Solana and randomized loot boxes will introduce you to randomization. As always, this is, these are suggestions. If you don't like these ideas, pick your own ideas, man. You're, you're a smart person. So the important thing here, start with whatever excites you. That's all that matters. Because if it doesn't excite you, if it doesn't keep you going, you're gonna give up. That's it, that's all you need. Check the description for a bunch of links to all of these things. I'll have all of these templates available, all of these, the templates, the sample programs, the links to existing open source programs, all of these courses, I'll have everything linked in the description. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments. I'm happy to help. Good luck, don't chew glass.